Ladies and gentlemen, our next Hall of Famer we'd like to introduce made multiple NCAA tournaments in doubles play, helped her team achieve an eighth overall ranking nationally in 1988. She's a two-time conference doubles champion, Susie Fritz. <laughs> Susie, we've talked with everybody else so far, maybe because it's a good icebreaker question, but we asked them how you ended up at Clarion. And uh, I always ask that because you always get really interesting aspects of somebody's, maybe their upbringing, maybe there's a funny anecdote. And, and I think the story you told about how you ended up at Clarion was, was very touching and very poignant. And I was hoping maybe you could share that with us. Certainly. Um, I remember being asked to play tennis at Edinburgh. Is that a, is that a bad word? Is that, am I allowed to say that? I, I think we're okay. We're okay. okay. <laughs> we'll put it in context in a minute. And my older sister and older brother went there, so I felt that that's where I should go. And Coach Bash Nagel um, had kept calling our house, calling our house. My parents said, let's, let's go to Clarion. Let's see what it's about. So we take a day off, and we drive to Clarion, and we have lunch with Coach Bash Nagel and Lenny Fye, who's sitting right behind him, uh, had lunch with us. And it, it was, I was in awe, just in awe of the whole experience, what he wanted to do with the program, what he felt about athletics in conjunction with academics. And we got in the car, and I, I can remember it like it happened yesterday. My parents turned around and looked at me and said, you want to go here, don't you? And they knew. And I shook my head. Yes, I, yes, I do. This is, where I, this is where I need to be. This is where I belong. And my parents, who raised six kids, all went to Catholic school, worked hard, worked extra hours to give, to give, give us those opportunities, looked at each other and said, we will make it work. And that is how I started my career at Clarion. You talked a lot about the work ethic and the idea of sacrifice that your parents instilled in you. Yes. Uh, what was it like growing up with them and, and having them as an example? Um, one, one summer in particular, my, both my parents worked. Like I said, we were one of, I was one of six kids. And my parents would come home, we would have dinner, and the three older kids would go to the, the Catholic school, the Catholic elementary school, and we would work so we could pay for our tuition to go to school the next year. And they never told us to be hard workers. They never told us to try harder. They led us by example, and it was constant example that they showed us, if you want something, you have to go after it. If you want to have your kids have a great education, you have to work so that you can provide for them. And it just, I, I, amazing people, amazing people. And I, I, all of my siblings are like that, every single one of them. I could call them today and say, I need your help. I need you to come to Maryland, and, and I would have five plus their families at my door. Wow. So when you came to Clarion, you met another one of these people that was so important in your life that taught you how to um, manage situations, how to think through things, and that was Coach Bosch Nagel. Could mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about how important he was in your development? He, um, I, re I remember the, f the first season, we, we didn't do, we didn't, do, we didn't have a winning season my first year here. And he always said to me, my, when I started that, that year, we came up for training and he said, if you want to be, you're a good player, but if you want to be a great player, you have to learn to go to the net and be aggressive, because I was a baseline player. And after that first season, he kept telling me, kept telling me, after that first season, that summer I went home and that was all I did. And that made the difference between being a great player and a good player. And the work ethic that he taught us, he thought academics and ac athletics were equally as important. He would have study halls for us that we were mandatory to go to so that we could make sure we were on top of our grades and our classes. And he built teamwork. And he, I would say the greatest lesson that he taught me from a college perspective is um, and, and it's something that I learned at Clarion, is I learned a lot of information, but I didn't, I, my biggest accomplishment here is I learned how to learn and I learned how to grow and I learned how to take feedback and turn it into something positive. 
Tennis can be a lonely sport. You know, you're out there on your own. You don't always have that coach in your ear instructing you what to do. So much of it's dependent upon your opponent. But coach also helped you um, learn how to overcome sometimes when there is adversity and you may not have help at the ready. Is that right? Right. He um, instilled in us, uh, we, we practice scenarios like, like you do in any sport. Um, one of the biggest things that, that, I, that stays with me to this day is that you have to have mental toughness. Any sport is 90% mental and being strong through the situation and 10% of it is because you do, you do it every day as you practice and you practice and you know it physically, but you have to be mentally tough to learn through those situations. You were here for the, what is really undoubtedly the best years of Clarion Tennis. At the time, did you realize the extent of how successful you were, how much your team was accomplishing? Um, it, it's interesting because uh, the first year, like I said, it was a little, uh, we, we progressed every year that we got, continually got better and better and better. And as you're going through it, you don't, you don't necessarily realize what you're doing, but I, I was just talking on the way up in the car that I remember winning the state title and my parents were there and my parents running to me off the court saying how much they how, how proud they were of what we had done i don't remember winning the match but i remember that moment and um yeah that was it was a pretty significant pre pretty significant time you you do remember you remember those things and and i remember going to, out to california to the ncaa championships and being invited with linny um, but you, you look back and you, you think you've changed history a little bit. You live the moment, but you look back and think, wow, what did we, what did we accomplish? It was amazing. Susie, is there anybody in particular you'd like to thank this evening? I, my parents are watching, I know. Um, I would like to thank them because they instilled in me the work ethic that I had. My family who is here, uh, I have one brother who wasn't make it, although he's at the, anybody know what the blue and gold dinner is for Boy Scouts? So he sent us a picture of the blue and gold dinner and someone, I, I don't remember who it was, said, oh, they're celebrating your, your induction into the, <laughs> into the Hall of Fame in Rhode Island. I'm like, no, that's a, that's a Boy Scout dinner, but it's blue and gold. Um, but he, he couldn't be here today, but my older sister, my older brother, my two younger sisters are here. Uh, my aunt and my cousin are here, my partner Telly and our two kids, and my nephew Jude, um, and my coach. And Lenny Fi is, um, talk about something amazing. Lenny and I, um, and Lynn Bazul, who played softball here, have been friends for 35 years, 36 years, and we vacation together, and our families vacation together. So my whole family of about 20, Lenny's, Lens, oh, we all plan our vacations together and we meet at uh, Smith Mountain Lake every year for two weeks and you just, you just can't, you can't, um, you can't imagine the friendships you've built here and the memories you've built and they carry you through a lifetime. Susie Fritz, everybody. <laughs>